Good evening ladies and gents, Alien Sweet Potato here with another two the point tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the warehouse from the Ancient Warfare 2 mod for Minecraft. You can see the beginnings of it right here. This is the warehouse control block which is the central hub of your warehouse. The warehouse is a basically giant container for all of your items. You can search for them using the warehouse control block. That's basically your hub of accessing all of your items in the warehouse. You can filter them. Uh, it has automation so you can automatically pipe things into and out of the warehouse. You can hook up an automatic crafting table. There's lots of stuff you can do with it. But the best part is just that you have all of your items together in one place so you don't have to have a whole bunch of chests taking up tons of room and you don't remember which one you put the item you need in so on and so forth. It is a multi-block structure and just like the uh, farms in Ancient Warfare 2. It has a main block, in this case the control block right here, that sits outside the bounds of the rest of it. So in here is where our multi-block structure is actually going to be. I put it outside of my house so that I can upgrade it, because I didn't really take into consideration the size of it when I built my house. The warehouse starts out five blocks long, five blocks wide, just like the farms, but it's four blocks tall. So all in all, you're going to need 100 of the warehouse blocks to fill up this multi-block structure for just the initial warehouse. It is upgradable with upgrade tokens, just like the farms, and it goes by the same sizes. Starting out 5x5, five five, next one's 9x9, nine nine, and then 16x16. 16 16. In order to learn how to build the warehouse, you have to research trading, which is kind of expensive, but it's well worth it. And something to note is, since it is a very large, unwieldy structure, if you didn't plan for it that well, you can actually move it. The thing is, you have to use a pickaxe. That's the only way to pick up uh, ancient warfare blocks like the farms, the control block. If you try to break it with an axe or your fist or the ancient warfare hammer that you use to rotate them with, it's just going to break completely. The only way you can actually pick it up is with a pickaxe. But you can thankfully move it in case you didn't plan correctly. So let's learn how to craft this. As I said, you have to learn trading first. The main block of the warehouse is going to be the small warehouse storage block. There are also medium and large warehouse storage blocks. The small storage block is the cheapest. It just takes four wooden planks of any type of wood at the corners of the crafting grid around a chest. The medium adds two iron ingots at the top and bottom, and the large fills in the other two spots with iron, so four iron total for the large. The control block uses one piece of paper, two chests, and six planks on either side. There are some optional blocks that you don't have to have for your basic warehouse. That's going to be the warehouse interface, which is made much like the control block, but in place of that second chest, it's just another plank. The interface is just used for the automation. So if you want to pipe in or out, or if you want to add an automated crafting table, you're going to need an interface block. But if you're just going to be accessing your items through the control block, you don't need to worry about it. The other thing that we can make is a crafting station. It sits on top of the control block, but the main structure is going to be made out of the storage blocks. 
Okay, so we've finished building our structure. This is just the base size, but you can see it is now completed. If we open up the control by right-clicking on it, I've got a couple items in there. This black bar right here is where you would search. So moss, if I want to search for this ball of moss, I just type that in there. The default is actually descending. Uh, which is kind of awkward. I'm not sure why that's the default, um, but that will put the item you're looking for at the very end of everything. So if you have a lot of items in here, you're going to have to scroll down to the bottom. If you check that, it changes it to ascending, puts it at the top. Unfortunately, if you close out, it doesn't save it, so you have to check that each time. You can sort by damage, quantity, or name. If we go outside, you can see that you can actually combine any variety of large, small, and medium storage blocks. Most of these are small because they're the cheapest, but I have some medium in here, and when I eventually upgrade the bounds, I'll probably throw in some large and some more medium. As long as you have enough blocks, it doesn't matter what kind they are. To add items to your warehouse, you're going to open up your control block and shift right, or sorry, shift left click, and that adds items into the inventory. So here we have the crafting station, which as I mentioned before, is placed on top of the control block. Now if we right click on it, unfortunately it doesn't show the whole inventory of the warehouse. That would be ideal, the way you know you would if you went to a crafting station next to a chest and it shows the inventory you can pull from it. Unfortunately it does not do that. However, what it does do is two things that are still pretty useful. For one, you can use it like the engineering station. If you place your research book here, and the little slot, you can craft ancient warfare recipes that you have researched. The other thing that it does, if you place the materials in the crafting grid and you want to make a lot of that recipe and you have the rest of the materials in the warehouse, it will just keep pulling the rest of the materials from the warehouse. So you see here I have one last piece of the warehouse that I haven't talked about yet, which is the stock viewer. So make that, and as you can see, the rest of the items are here in the warehouse. So I could just keep making it if I want. And unfortunately, in order to clear it, there's no handy clear button. You just have to take it out manually and put it back into the warehouse. But now we have the stock viewer, and what that does is if you place it on the outside of any block on the warehouse, you can set it to show specific inventory. So what you would do is you would place an item, let's say I wanted to know how many snowballs I have in my warehouse, I would place that there. It just shows how many are in that individual block, unfortunately, not in the entire warehouse. The items are actually stored in each separate block, so since I have so few items in here right now, um, it's not taking up everything. It's all just stored in one block, and I'm actually not sure if there's a way to determine exactly which block they're in. But if you do know which block the item is in that you want to monitor, this is how you would do it, using the warehouse stock viewer, placing it on the outside and adding a filter. You can also right click on these blocks and add filters directly, and this has to do with automation of piping items into them and the way the items get moved around the warehouse into each different block. If you want a block to only hold a certain item, you would add that item right here to create a filter for it. This has been Alien Sweet Potato with another To The Point tutorial. As always, thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful and you'd like to see more content like this, please like and subscribe.